Hello folks. For the next update on the corn project, it's really not a corn update, so don't get mad at me and you know, well, you can send your comments if you like, but um, what the next piece that I'll be working on on the corn is the rotating base. And there's a couple different ways to do this. If you want to see some machining on the rotating base, look at Maddie's workshop. He has a great video where he shows how he turns the outside, he turns the groove, and then he turns the stem and drills and taps it and machines the upper part that will hold the tool holder. And all, all of that is going to be, you know, it's, it's your ordinary lathe and mill work, basically. Um, but there's, and there's two different options that they list in the corn plans. And one of them is to mill, is to make form tools and turn a, basically a T-slot. Let me see if I can show you a picture of that. Now this one is the drill, drilled and tapped version. That's the kind that Maddie did on his. Um, the other one is a T-slot like this and you'd have to make two different form tools and then you'd make little round shaped T pieces that would go inside the, the groove there of, of the rotating base. So I'm like, man, I got a better way of doing that. And that's what this video is about. The George H. Thomas rotary table. It's a three and three quarter inch or yeah, rotary table. It's a really neat project. You could, if you have a couple of big pieces of scrap steel, you could probably make this. I actually made the base of this on a, uh, a homemade milling machine. I turned the round part of the base on my 8x14 lathe master lathe and the top part I turned that on the 8x14 lathe master lathe as well including this kind of detail this is what I wanted to, to show and kind of focus in on there's some v-shaped they're curved v-shaped and curved nuts that go in this dovetail groove that you make and it's a really, if you ask me, it's a really elegant solution to a problem like the rotating base on the corn has. So that, that is how do you have something that you can have stops, you can see like that, just hit, that it will, you can preset them and turn it and it'll stop at a certain point. So I really like the dovetail groove. I still have the tools, I'll show those in a minute. I have the tools that I made, used uh, this for, let me show you a schematic. This is this um, article about the small rotary table. If you buy, if you can find a copy of this book, The Model Engineer's Workshop Manual by George Thomas, it has a complete set of drawings and description about how to make it in here. This is a, a Xerox of the of these pages, and you can see maybe this. If you're not understanding what I'm saying about the V-shaped blocks, this will show you a little bit better. Um, illustration of it and there are some actually speaking of illustrations there's photographs here you go so you can see they're curved to fit the radius of the rotary table and they're also v-shaped so that they won't pop out and you mill you end up milling a slot i'm not going to take this thing apart but there's a slot that's milled that you can fit the blocks in you can see it right there where my thumb is so it's just milled from the inside all right, so hopefully that's a pretty adequate description. I looked around, I didn't see a description of the George Thomas rotary table on YouTube anywhere. So I wanted to show this, kind of cover it. Since I, I haven't done, it's been a busy week for me at work. I haven't really started machining the rotating base yet. But instead of doing the drilled and tap version or the T-shaped thing, I'm going to attempt to make mine with the dovetail groove just like on the George Thomas rotary table. Another neat picture in the in the plans he's showing using the um, universal pillar tool, which I made in the previous project. He used that to drill and tap the holes in the V-shaped nuts. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope that's uh, interesting to you. I'll certainly document. I'll do a, a video as I to document the whole build process. Let me show you some of the things that I mentioned a moment ago. In making the dovetail groove, you actually fabricate your own cutting tools. This is 3 16 inch 
drill rod, they call it silver steel, and you make a left hand cutter and a right hand cutter for cutting that 20 degree groove. It's not focusing very well. But you, you basically just form it to shape and then you heat it and quench it and then temper it and then you can file it to a nice sharp. And all I ever use these things for, these two in particular, is for cutting that one dovetail groove in this rotary table. So I should be able to sharpen them up a little bit and use them fine. You, there is a, you can make a simple holder out of half inch square steel stock and hold it a different way. This is not the one I used on the rotary table. I actually think I had one that the hole went sideways so that the cutter went this away. So I may have to make another holder for that, but we'll see. I'll, uh, now I've got the nice 12 by 36 inch lathe, so it gives me a little bit more capability. So those are the cutters. That's a brief description of the George Thomas rotary table. If you haven't made one of these and you need a small rotary table, especially if you have something like a Myford lathe, this thing is specifically made to fit on the Myford lathe to be able to, as an augment for it. So maybe someday I'll luck out and find myself a, a Myford lathe that I can buy. And they're pretty small. I'll show you. I keep the parts, I keep the rotary table and all the little doodads. Let me show you this. I, I took a piece of steel, three, three quarter inch steel, and I cut a thread. I forget exactly what that is. It looks like 5 16 18 maybe. And the, the outside, the larger portion is 3 quarter 16, and it screws in so that I could screw on a, a Sureline or a TIG chuck right on there and um, be able to use that for work holding. So just another little feature. And it all fits conveniently inside. This is a Whitman sampler candy box that I keep it in. You can keep some little desiccant packets to keep it dry. So that's my little update for so far for Saturday. I'll go ahead and post this this weekend. I'm going to start working on the, the uh, rotating base, but it'll be a lot like what Maddie did with the exception of the dovetail groove. So I hope that's interesting for you, and please let me know your comments, and I will keep you posted.